Hello and welcome on board. You're watching Eye on Africa and I'm Clarisse Fortuné, our top stories. Police clash with protesters who continued to gather in Kenya a day after President Ruto withdrew his unpopular tax bill. Two people were killed. After Timbuktu's jihadist police chief Al Hassan Agabdulaziz is found guilty of war crimes, we'll have some reactions in Mali. And Mauritania goes to the polls this weekend with concerns about the official language among the issues. But we start in Kenya, where protesters took to the streets once again this Thursday, despite President William Ruto having withdrawn an unpopular financial bill. Two people were killed. For many, Ruto's concession came too late after 23 people were killed on Tuesday in clashes with police. Our correspondent Olivia Bizo is in Nairobi. Kenyans said that they would mobilize on social media, and they did. Demonstrations have been taking place across the country this Thursday. Here in Nairobi, there were less protesters than on Tuesday, but that's also because it was incredibly difficult for them to gather. Every time large groups started to form, police officers fired tear gas, rubber bullets, and even some live bullets as well. So it really became um, a game of cat and mouse between the protesters and the police, and there were some very chaotic scenes here in Nairobi. It's important for people to remain peaceful, to follow the law, but at the same time, everybody has a right to express themselves. And we come in peace, we just want to be heard. We just want to be heard. We come in peace, stop killing us. The problem we have here in Kenya is not even the finance bill. Even the first place where we are going to demonstrate, we, are just, we just don't have trust in, <coughs> in Ruto. Ruto is a thief, he's a murderer, he's killed so many so far. Even though it was difficult for protesters to gather in large numbers here in Nairobi, they are mobilizing on social media. They're still incredibly angry at Ruto's government, even though he's now said that he will withdraw the finance bill, which initially sparked the protests. But protesters are saying that the finance bill was actually just the trigger. Now they want to go beyond that. They want Ruto to go. The problem is that they no longer trust him. And they say that's evident um, in the fact that he said that only six people were killed, for example, in the protests on Tuesday, even though the Human Rights Commission has confirmed the death of at least 23 people. The former head of the Islamic police in Mali's city, Tumbuktu, was convicted by the ICC of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Prosecutors of the International Criminal Court said Alassane Ag Abdulaziz led a reign of terror in the historic city. Clémence Valère has the story. A bit of warning, you might find some of the images upsetting. Al Hassan either directly committed a number of war crimes and crimes against humanity or that he aided and abetted. After four years of court procedures, life can resume for these Malian citizens gathered in this hotel room in Bamako. On Wednesday, the International Criminal Court convicted former Timbuktu Islamic police chief Al Hassan for war crimes and crimes against humanity. It's a feeling of relief for these peaceful people who've lived through this sad moment in their lives. The 46-year-old jihadist was found guilty of committing atrocities such as torture, public floggings and public amputations in the Malian city between 2012 and 2013 when Islamists from Ansar Din and Al-Qaeda seized control. However, Al-Hassan was acquitted on the war crime charges of rape, forced marriage and sexual slavery, drawing condemnation from survivor representatives and human rights groups such as Amnesty International. The ICC conviction of Al-Hassan for war crimes and crimes against humanity provides a measure of justice for victims. However, countless girls and women left tormented by conflict-related sexual violence will feel severe disappointment. The three-judge panel found that while rape, sexual slavery and forced marriage did occur while Al-Hassan's group controlled Timbuktu, the man couldn't be connected to those crimes. For representatives of Malian women, it's a bitter pill to swallow. At least we can see that there is a trial. There is someone present who was guilty. We must punish, because everything that has been done is inhumane. Al-Hassan was also acquitted of attacks on protected heritage sites. A date for his sentencing is yet to be announced, but he could face up to life in prison. 
Tension between Benin and Niger have caused significant disruptions for travelers with the closure of the once thriving Niger river crossing. The closure following the military coup in Niamey, which sparked a diplomatic rift between the two countries. The major road has been shut down since the regime change, preventing three to 4,000 daily travelers from crossing. For almost a month, all travelers heading to Niger have been forced to stop in Kandy a town about 100 kilometers from the Beninese border. Among them, a man who just arrived from Accra, Ghana. He is stranded, desperately trying to reach his family. It is really difficult. I don't know when I will be able to get home and be with my family. I don't know which way to go. I am lost. For the love of God, I wish all this would end. The recent military coup in Yemi sparked a diplomatic rift between Niger and Benin. This major road through Malangville has been shut down since the regime change, preventing three to 4,000 daily travelers from crossing. Before the closure, all these people used to come down to Malangville. Now they are all forced to go to their respective destination by other means. We will have to make a detour, go through Nigeria and arrive in Niger. It will be a great hardship. Amina Hamidou travels regularly to Niamey for cardiac treatment. She feels the financial burden. Returning home through Nigeria and traveling through Niger is difficult if you don't have at least 50,000 in your pocket for the trip. I pray that peace will return to our two countries so that people can come and go as they used to, because since the borders closed, things have been bad here in the north. Amidou Ndiaye, a retiree, hasn't seen his wife and three kids in Niger for six months. It's been a nightmare since the border closed. We only communicate through WhatsApp. We'll just have to wait until the border reopens. It used to take five hours to reach Niamey from the Malonville River crossing. However, with the current detours, rough roads and Nigerian customs delays, the same trip now takes 10 hours. For now, the idea of reopening the border is on hold as talks between the two nations have hit a roadblock. Nearly two million people are expected to go to the polls on Saturday in Mauritania. President Mohamed Wold Gazarwani is running for a second term and will face six opponents. Slavery, corruption, security are among the issues talked about during the campaign as well as the official language, Arabic, is becoming increasingly dominant in Mauritania. It's today the official language in the education system. But some say the country's linguistic diversity is now under threat. Liman Dao, Sambat Peace, have more. Coucou, Rasul, comment vas-tu? Awa Sire is speaking to her son over a video call. She sent him to Senegal to study after the Mauritanian government enforced Arabic as the main language of learning at school. In Mauritania, the government makes decisions without consulting the population. You cannot wake up one day and tell people everything has changed. This is why I looked for another solution for my son. It's really a shame. The law was adopted in August 2022. Since then, Doro, a teacher, has been fighting for other local languages like Pearl, Wolof and Soninke to be recognized. He is part of an organization also pushing for this. What we're demanding is equality. We're demanding equality between all Mauritanian languages. We only have four languages. What's difficult about making all four languages official? I should underline that these four languages were all used in the school system for 20 years, from 1979 to 1999. The government claims that the other languages have not been forgotten by this educational reform. It says they will be reintroduced in years to come. We have created an institute for the promotion of national languages. It is currently at work. From next year, it will begin experimenting with the implementation of these languages in primary schools. We think that after two years, we will effectively launch these languages in the entire national education system. So there is no need to fear anything. Some are also concerned about the future of the French language in Mauritania especially if the reform remains in place definitively. The DR Congo's new prime minister went to Goma on an official visit. 
Judith Suminois met with various organizations to discuss humanitarian needs in the conflict torn east of the country. A city surrounded by displaced people with clashes with rebels taking place nearby. Emet Livingston in Kinshasa has more. Congolese Prime Minister Judith Suminwa said during her visit to Goma on Wednesday that her first objective was to assess the security situation and then to assess humanitarian needs. Humanitarian needs are enormous in North Kivu province, where some 2.7 million people have been forced to flee their homes due to conflict and where M23 rebels backed by Rwanda have been fighting government forces since late 2021. Most of the displaced live in inhumane conditions and will be hoping that the Prime Minister's visit will lead to more aid. Civil society figures say the government isn't doing nearly enough. One spending watchdog, for example, says that the state has only spent $19 million over the course of four years. I don't know how many cents it is. In any case, not a dollar. A dollar in four years to a displaced person is not serious. As far as humanitarian tragedy are concerned, first of all, there's the poor governance of public finances, because we could at least say to ourselves we are going to tighten our belts. In other words, if the President of the Republic received 350 million, which only consumed 200, we give that to humanitarian aid. One government official said that aid funding had been dispersed through different ministries, with over 200,000 households assisted. The United Nations is calling for $2.6 billion to respond to the humanitarian emergency in Congo. But its humanitarian plan was only funded by 40% in 2023. Several opposition supporters were beaten and arrested by police in Zimbabwe's capital after Citizens' Coalition for Change party members were denied bail by the Harare's Magistrates' Court. The party's interim leader, Jameson Timba, and 78 activists were arrested two weeks ago for holding a political gathering, which authorities said was unauthorized. Lawyers say they will appeal the decision at the High Court. Nyasha Shingono reports from Harare. Zimbabwe opposition supporters clashed with police at court today. They had come in solidarity with several of their party supporters who were arrested two weeks ago. Police beat and arrested several of them when they started to sing protest songs outside court. They were protesting the move by the court to deny 78 of their members, including their interim leader, bail today. They were denied bail on the basis that they could interfere with state witnesses. We don't believe that there are any compelling reasons to deny these accused persons bail. We don't believe that there is any strong evidence to substantiate this the, 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 the state case. And as such, we are going to take up uh, this case on appeal and challenge. Addressing his party leadership in Arari yesterday, President Emerson Nangagwa said the law would take its course on anyone who would want to protest. And because we say it's good for the soul, we'll leave you with a bit of music in Morocco with the Mawazin Festival. The event brings together stars of international and Arab music and turns the cities of Rabat and Saleh into a stage for prestigious encounters between the public and a group of renowned artists. That's it for me. Thank you for watching Eye on Africa.